Okay, we're going to start with the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, in God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Almighty of heaven and earth, and, of heaven and, earth. and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his Je only Son, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord and Savior, conceived by the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin, born Mary, the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, was crucified, crucified died, and buried. buried. The third day he rose from the dead, dead. he ascended he into heaven, into and, heaven. and seated at the right hand of God, God, God Almighty. Almighty. He, from thence he shall come to he judge come in the dead. quick in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church, the church of the Universal, Universal, the communion of the saints, the saints forgiveness of sin, the of sin, resurrection of the body, in life, and life everlasting. Today's lesson is about taming uh, the tongue. And so the prayer in our book is so fitting, I thought I would do it. It says, Lord, forgive us for the ways in which we use our tongues to tear others down. Amen. As we go throughout this day, help us to bring our tongue into submission. We need more of your power to help with our, and it says to identify on the side of the page before this, it lists a bunch of negative uses of the tongue. So you can put in whatever you need to work on, whether it's a lying tongue, a meddling tongue, a complaining tongue, a betraying tongue, cursing tongue, whatever you need to work on. It says choose five of these out of this category and work on controlling our tongue. Grant us the strength and courage to do better today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's so true. Now, oh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Amen. Amen. Give us this day Amen. our daily Amen. bread. Amen. Give us our Amen. trespasses. Amen. We forgive Amen. those who Amen. trespass Amen. and lead us not Amen. into temptation. Amen. But deliver Amen. us Amen. but thine is the kingdom, power, and glory. glory. Amen. 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 Today's lesson on page 63. Taming the tongue. The lesson scripture is from James 3, to, uh, James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. The focus scripture is James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. The key verse together, the tongue is a small member, it's the most great exponent. James 3, verse 5, New Revised Standard Version. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make, make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is, is perfect. perfect. Able, able to, to keep, keep the whole, the whole body, body in check. With a bridle. With a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look or like look a ship, though they are they so are hard to make strong winds to drive, drive them. them. Though yeah. they yeah. are guided by the very yeah. small very water, small wherever, wherever the will of the body directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue, and the tongue is, a is a fire. The tongue is placed in the tongue of the members and the world of iniquity. It is a whole body set on fire by the cycle of nature. 
and, and, he and it himself is set on fire by hell. By hell. Mm -hmm. For every species of beast and animal or reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no, but no one, one can, can tame the uh, 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 reckless evil. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the from same the mouth, mouth from the the lips, and my brother, my brother, this, 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 this all all to be so. Does a does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh, fresh and brackish water? Twelve together. Can a, a fig tree, 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 my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters steal olives or a grapevine figs? No more, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. Hear what Christ our Savior said Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and the prophets. Glory be, to, be the to the Father and, and to the Holy Ghost. And to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, beginning, and now, now, and now, <laughs> okay, Pastor. Sister Smith. Where you going? Taming the tongue. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Sister Smith. Such a wonderful lesson this morning. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I, we had such a dynamic A-plus lesson last week. Faith without works is dead. Talk about love. Pastor, thank you, Pastor. And we're moving on with the wisdom series. And some might say, how is wisdom related to taming the tongue? Very much so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Proper use of knowledge. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get into that, taming the tongue. I was just wondering if Sister Sonia would give us a little opening prayer for our class. Yes, ma'am, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Sister most gracious and heavenly father i want to thank you for this day lord god i want to thank you for protecting us during the night lord god and i want to thank you for waking us up this morning yes. thank you for this lesson lord god thank you uh for our teacher lord god who has prepared the lesson i pray lord god that by the power of your holy spirit lord god that in the teaching of this lesson that it would affect us in a positive way, Lord God. I pray that the wisdom that we receive from this lesson, Lord God, that we would, may be able to apply it to our lives yes. and help us be able to tame our speech. Let us um, let us speak words that are sweet, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that we may glorify you in our ways and our actions, in our our speech and how we deal with our brothers and sisters, Lord God. Thank you for this lesson today. Thank you for everyone who is listening today. Thank you for our teacher. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. This we ask in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Thank you. Okay, taming the tongue. Whew. 
We noticed that our background uh, also emphasized the importance of that. <laughs> because our key verse says, so also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren Wiersbe has a little t uh, B series that he does. And, and part of that book of James, there's a section on there talking about the world's smallest but Lord, this troublemaker. Uh -huh. <laughs> we look at our uh, tongues and reference to other parts of our bodies. It's very small, but it is the largest troublemaker. Okay. So we're gonna realize that during the time of this writing, Christians were not, they were being singled out and persecution had begun. Uh, internal strife was taking place within the church Christians were dealing with double arguments, false teachers, power struggles, gossip, and slander. Now, in the previous lessons and the previous two chapters, uh, James has explained to us two characteristics of the mature Christian. In James 1, we were taught to be patient in trouble and to practice the truth in chapter 2. Now, in today's lesson, James has turned his attention to the Christian speech. The, the, the gift of speech is one of the most powerful gifts that God could have given us, because we can do so much good with it. But we have to uh, keep it in check, because there are some bad things that come along, too. <laughs> So we want to start off, it seems like it's a little different from the rest of the scriptures, but it, it really isn't. But I need somebody just to read verses one and two of today's printed text. King James Virgin. My brothers, be not many masters, knowing that we should receive a greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in words, the same as a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Okay, we'll stop right there. Okay. Um, James is telling us about the teacher accountability and he's giving us warnings that everybody ought not to become teachers is what he says. Now, does that sound like an odd remark for someone to make? Look like you could just encourage everybody to teach. What do y'all think? Did it strike you odd is my question to read that? Not many of you should become teachers. Why on earth would someone say that? I think because you have to talk a lot and you're teaching and, and, and you're helping others and you have to be an example of what you're teaching. Oh, now that's and I think I think the Bible says you will be held responsible on it for you teaching us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so everybody can't do this. What you do? <laughs> I guess and that's good, Jackie. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Ma Oh, go ahead, Trey. No, you go ahead, Mom. <laughs> uh, if you put it, I mean, context during the time, teachers were, you know, well respected and looked up to. Yeah. So they wield a lot of power. It's where they kind of shape the minds and thoughts of people. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, they had to be examples of, of the things that they said. So they were held at a different standard. Okay. All right, very good input. Trinity, is that what you were gonna say? Just about, and um, I feel like God has, been given, has given us specific roles to fill or Amen. specific things that we are supposed to do within our life. And so if God has given us the gift of hospitality, we need to work in that because that is what God has gifted us in. Not that we can't be teachers and not that we don't have the potential to become teachers, uh -huh. but God has assigned specific things for us to do. Yeah. And I guess uh, what's uh, misleading to some, um, James is really not discouraging people from becoming teachers. 
when he said that when you don't make mistakes, uh, you're perfect in meaning the maturity. And if you go to Hebrews 5, 12 and 14, he's talking about, um, well, many of you should have been teachers by now, but you still on the milk <laughs> instead of getting into the solid food. He's talking about people being matured enough to teach and to get off the surface stuff. But as Sonia has said, and some others of you, there was a lot going on in the church uh, at the time of this writing. And James says, some of you all are teaching for the wrong reasons. Uh, you, you're teaching because you want to have esteem uh, in the community. Not because you were called to teach. You just want you know, the reputation, you, you just want the esteem that comes from it. And then James said, uh, he's teaching us that some viewed it as an occupation, not as a service to God. So it's, it's not that he was discouraging qualified teachers, but he was saying we need to be mature in our teachings. We need to get out of the milk and get into the fruit. And, um, and, and do it for the right reasons. Do it because you were called to teach. And trust me, the Holy will let you know your callings, you know, because, uh, and, and he'll help you through your struggles when <laughs> you think maybe that's not your calling. <laughs> so, so we, um, and don't view it as an occupation. Uh, you know, it's a service to God. Okay, so the question is, why, and I know Jackie, you might have partly answered this already. Why do you think teachers will be judged with greater strictness? Anybody? Because they're teaching. Okay, so what happens, what happens when you're teaching? What, what, what do you mean? Setting an example. Okay. Because I heard Mars say teachers set an example. Yes, and you got to, and, and, and when you set an example, you got to really be living the life that you, you, you teach it. You can't just teach that life, teach it and not walk in it. Right. So I feel like you'll be, he going to judge you like that because you, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So you got to be prepared to do it the right way. Okay. And there were false teachers who just came came around and taught the wrong thing okay and, and so that's that's another reason yeah. teach the, right the, thing and not the wrong thing okay lead people astray don't lead people astray right 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 it's a serious responsibility it really causes you to do a lot of self-examination if you take god seriously yeah. <laughs> If you fear the Lord, you're going to take him seriously. And it's not to say that we are perfect in the sense that we make no mistakes, but uh, we'll make them not maliciously, just a human error. But God will, his Holy Spirit will correct us. He knows when uh, we're not trying to lead people astray because of our mistakes. We just maybe got ahead of ourselves or, or, or talked over ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's, I wouldn't want anybody to think teaching is something God has called us to do and we can never do anything wrong. It's that you don't plan to do it wrong. Um, and that is what in the church. If teachers, see, this is cyclical. It's like a cycle. If teachers misinform and mislead, their listeners will in turn misinform and mislead others. So the cycle goes on and on. If, if, if Yeah, if I pass the teach me something and it turns out wrong, well, I'm going to teach Thomas that and he's going to teach our grandchildren that because that's what was taught to us, you know. So it's good to study to show yourself approved. <laughs> Amen. Trinity, read that, uh, Trinity, read that little verse, that uh, scripture there in blue for me. Yes, ma'am. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heres heresies, mm -hmm. 
even denying the Lord who bought bought them uh -huh. and bring on themselves swift destruction. Mm -hmm. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of the truth will be blasphemed. Okay. That's just some scripture that Peter, in the book of Peter, it tells us there are going to be some, some false teachers who secretly bring in destructive heresies, things that pull you away from the Lord who's brought you as far as you have come. And if you uh, get a chance to read that, you'll find later that, that they, they will be dealt with. So James is warning in these two verses that because teachers are responsible to their followers, they will be judged more harshly for the errors that they teach. Uh, that's, you know, when I first started teaching the Sunday school some 20 years ago, I would tell people all the time, now, if I can't show it to you in the word of God, don't believe me. <laughs> Amen. I don't, I don't Amen. want it to be according to Sister Eula Smith. And even with that, sometimes we, we might make a mistake, you know, but, but God will correct us. So it's not to discourage us. It's just the study to so you show yourself approved, get into the word of God, you know, and um, teach like that because the Holy Spirit will guide you because he is truly the teacher, <laughs> truly. So um, we teach by precepts and examples, understanding and communicating the word of God with the Holy Spirit's guidance. That is one of the functions of the Holy Spirit. And I heard many of you say this, teachers must practice what they teach. Otherwise, what is it? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. You teaching what you don't do yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So a wonderful, a wonderful profession to teach if you're called by God to do it but you do it according to the word of God and use the Holy Spirit as your guide. Uh, we, we've, we've all sat through different sermons when it was according to what the newspaper said and what the television said without ever getting into the word of God. And I know we have, because many of you all have commented about that. Yes. Not since you passed the pain. <laughs> Okay, not since you though, but we've, we've struggled through that in the past. We did. Okay. So let's look at verses three and four. I need someone to read that, please. NIV. Oh, my aim is on it. Yeah, NIV. Uh, we, we put a small piece of metal in a, in, in the, wait a minute. We put a small piece of metal in the mouth of a horse and make it obey us. We cannot control a whole animal with it. And how about ships? They are very big. They are divided among by strong winds, but they are steady by, a, by very small rubbles. Yeah, yeah. The, it makes them go where the captain wanted to go. All right. See, we got to think about our tongue as being a small thing that controls yeah. our bodies as we use, see these analogies here. Um, mm -hmm. And now, it, it, evidently, it's important because we had this lesson not too long ago. I was looking over my files, and this picture that is up before you now, the bit and the rudder, yeah. you see where I'm moving this uh, right here over the bit? Yes. That's piece of metal that the rider could put in the horse's mouth and they can control which way uh, the horse will move. I don't know if you all have ever been on a horse, but that is a big animal. I got on one once. I did not realize <laughs> that it was so big. But this little bit right here that I'm circling to on this picture that they put in this horse's mouth they can control his movements, which way he goes, when he stops, when he moves. And likewise, this huge ship that I, oh, did I take that off the off screen? No, you good. It's on. Okay, let me get back to it then, because I've lost it. Just one second. 
clicked something. Come on. Okay. But anyway, I'm going to get back to it in a minute. <laughs> as soon as I maybe close some of these files on my screen that is not allowing me to see it. Okay. I'm not happy. Okay. Hold on. Anyway, you see how big that um, that ship is. I don't know what I need to do, Pastor, but I done lost my sharing as far as I can see. I don't know what I did. Can you move your mouse? Yeah. Are you, are you moving your mouse? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Let's try it this way because we can still see, but I think you're for whatever reason, it's stuck because I can see your cursor, but it's not moving on the screen. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to stop you from sharing and then you can just start it up again. Okay, go. All right. Okay, go ahead and try it again. Okay. Do y'all see it now still? Yes. 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 Okay, sorry about that. Okay, well, that rudder, uh, where the arrow is pointing to, that little small piece controls this huge ship. Just whatever way the captain wants it to go. And we need to keep that in mind when we talk about the tongue being the smallest troublemaker. <laughs> we, can, we can direct our bodies with our tongue. So... Uh, those are some analogies um, that we want to remember. Now, um, Virginia, would you read this that's on the screen, please? Because it gives us a solution. Virginia, are you muted? I think oh. she might be. Okay. Yeah, there good. you go. When Jesus Christ controls the tongue, then we need not fear saying the wrong things or even saying the right things in a wrong way. When Jesus Christ is the Lord of the heart, then he is Lord of the lips too. Death and life are in the power of, tongue, of the tongue. The did we lose, did Virginia freeze? I think we lost her. Okay, well, what she was saying, we need, we need Jesus. It, it, it seems like this is a heart thing, that if our heart is right, you know, we don't, and we have accepted Jesus Christ, we don't have to fear saying the wrong thing or saying the, wrong, the right thing the wrong way. And so many times we're guilty of that and we come back and we say to people, oh, I didn't mean it that way. You know, so uh, we got to learn some restraints and we got some little guidelines later where we want to think before we speak because the damage is already done once you speak it. And people didn't know you didn't mean it that way. They're already hurt, <laughs> you know. So, yes. I'm kind of going through something like this right now in my life uh -huh. with my tongue, uh -huh. with my with certain people in my family. Yeah. And God is, is these last few days, it's been mm -hmm. awesome because I've been really reading my words and, and everything that he's going through right now, he's telling me in my heart that he got me now because I'm controlling the words that used to would come out of my mouth. I wouldn't dare do it. I just pray. I say, Lord, I'm just going to pray for us. Yeah. Because I'm playing a big part of whatever going on too, so I can't take just guilt saying they doing it because I might be playing a part. So I'm asking God to help all of my sisters and brothers so we can get on back on the right, with the right words to say. Right. I'm not cussing like I normally would do because I know God is with me now. Okay. I know he's doing this and not Alice. All right. And I'm loving it so much. To, I'm willing to share today that God is, you know, he's really working me and he's showing me through these verses. I mean, our son at school, our Bible study, all of it hit me in one week. <laughs> no, it was me. 
All and right. I need to change it. So I'm asking for the church and everybody on this line to keep praying for Alice because Alice is trying with all her heart to do what God wants and not what Alice wants. All right. And what was the key thing Alice said, anybody? Did they get that? Key thing she said. She said she recognized that she's part of the problem. It's not everybody else. You, it's me, oh Lord, <laughs> standing in the need. It's me. Amen. And Amen. you know, sometimes we we don't um, we ne we want to blame everybody else but us. So that's why I say self examination is so important because it's sometimes it's you. It's not everybody else. Yeah. But yeah. but from this slide, it says, when Jesus is the Lord of our lives, he is the Lord of our lips, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the scripture that tells us, Matthews 12 and 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart? Mar is sort of like that toothpaste uh, example we use. And, you know, I, I'm picking on Mara because she says she's going to tell everybody that her Sunday school teacher says she's a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Pastor gave that analogy to us. You know, it's almost like, what's in your tube? That when you square, it's what coming out, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And um, well, the, like I said, the tongue, the, the, the gift of speech is one of the most powerful things God could have blessed us with. Why? Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. If you're sick and you're constantly saying, oh my, woe is me. I'm never going to get over this. This is never going to pass. You are speaking that into your life. But on the other hand, if you're speaking, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I know I hate Virginia got off the line and knocked off because she's a living testimony of that. Because we claim God's word. Alonzo, I know you did too. Jackie, all of us who've been through stuff. Sister yes. Battles on here today. All Amen. of us through stuff. You know, we got to speak it positively. Yes. And God has given us the tongue to be able to do that. So we need to use it. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alice, for that testimony. It's always good to know how the, the scriptures, when you read them and when you study them, and your testimony is, is how it can be. Because that may be helping somebody else who's going through the same thing. Okay. Now, um, Let's look at the, the power to destroy. We just got through talking about the power to direct. That's what the tongue can do. When we use the ship and the bit and the rudder and the horse, <laughs> uh, the horse and the bit and the ship and the rudder, how that little something was used to control their movements. So is the tongue able to control ours? So that's, that could be a good thing. But let's look at the power to destroy, verses 5 through 8. I need someone to read that, please. Verses 5 through 8. 5 through 8. Oh. So also the tongue's a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and it and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue. A restless evil full of deadly poison. Okay. All right. So here we are again talking about that uh, little member that can cause so much of trouble. Do you, have y'all ever watched on television the many forest fires in California, Arizona? Do you know some of those are just caused by a cigarette butt? Somebody just thumped a cigarette butt there 
and put that, you know how small a cigarette butt is, and you can see the damage that it causes. We're still thinking about this small tongue that, that causes that type of damage, even though it's small, you know. And um, this scripture say that the tongue is like a fire and it's placed among our members as a world of iniquity and it stains the whole body. Can, give, can someone give me an example of how when a tongue gets into the body that it, it damages the body? And, I, and we could say the body of Christ or your body. How does the tongue do that? Um, because the tongue has the power to either uplift or build up people. It has the power to destroy and tear down people. Um, you cannot unhear what you've heard. So okay. if you say something and you don't know what people are dealing with, you don't know what insecurities they have, you don't know what a person is struggling with or how they're broken. So you can say things that can permanently change, hurt somebody or change somebody or, yeah. Right, 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 right. Gossip, lies, I mean, people, yes. patients, people, it's a lot. Yes. A lot and, of questions um, says about uh, you can't unhear. Right. <laughs> You're right. And um, I'm going to say this, uh, but I hate to keep using pastor's examples and then I don't hate it because that's why he gives them. I remember when he first started uh, at the Southern Cook-Off and the one, everybody, hundreds of people been by his table and told him how good his dish was. And that one person passed by there and said something and put it in the trash and, and, and just, I think that affected him, that hurt him. <laughs> just one person. You know, it what that for you forget about all the rest, but just that one come to your mind. That's why we have to be so careful on how we speak to one another. Because as science say, sometimes we can't unhear that. And you know, Pastor just did, never unheard that or saw what that person did. Although the hundreds of people told him something different. So we want to be careful because the, the function of us is to edify one another, to build each other up, not to tear each other down, you know. And sometimes we speak and we say things and it offends and it hurts people. And they are just devastated by what you said. You've gone on and don't even remember you said it. <laughs> you, you know, you just as happy as you could be. And that person is just devastated, just stressed out because of what you said. So, and now uh, I want to add, I know that, and I'm not adding to the scripture because I know it, it uh, explains it further. It says, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison, but the Holy Spirit can control that tongue. Yeah. It can. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. And those of you who watched a lot of the Cowboys, y'all see when a wild horse, a rider gets on that horse and they buck and they buck, they buck until they tame that horse. And once that horse is tamed, it becomes a great worker. You know, it's not out there just wanting to stomp on everything that comes in its path. You know, so just like us in life, sometimes we got to buck. <laughs> We got to buck and get, and get tamed and become the kind of worker that God wants us to be. I love it when I see how that horse bucks and bucks and bucks. And, but once the rider gets control of him and he just works just in a steady beat, he becomes a worker. He becomes very valuable as a worker and not a threat. So we want to remember that your tongue has the power to destroy, assassinate somebody's character. Do y'all know, uh, are you all familiar with the telephone game? I tell Sonia, Sonia tell Pat, by the time we get to Alice, it's all different from what I said. Amen. <laughs> it could be 
and got more and more malicious down the line. The gossip. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gossip. Yes. Gossip. So gossip gets worse as it goes on. Right. James did uh, uh, went on to describe how something as small as a little fire can rage out of control. And, and there are two ideas that are contained here. One, our thoughtless and careless words are like a fire that consumes and destroys everything in its path. You may look that up in Proverbs 6 and 27. And then uh, just as the fire destroys as it spreads, the tongue affects all parts of our lives. An unrestrained tongue defiles our whole person. Yes. So we want to keep it in check. It keeps us, it could keep us from getting to our healing. So there's a thing about maturity. Maura, I'm gonna get you to read this if you can see it. All I have is, a, oh, okay. No. I'm gonna read what, what's there. Okay. The greatest sign of integrity for Christians is not what we say, but more often what we do not say. A refusal to speak negativity to our about uh, uh, to or about others, even those who have a sign of spiritual maturity. Okay, so a lot of times we say it's not what you say, but how you say it. That is true, but when you are growing in the Lord and your integrity. Uh, more often, it's, 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 it's not what you say, but what you don't say. You, when you don't lash out at somebody and speak to them negatively, even though they hurt you, you know, it's showing control. And that's a sign of spiritual maturity, that you don't give grief for grief. <laughs> ugliness for ugliness. I know that... Um, and this has proven to be very effective if somebody walk up to you and say something so ugly, you just look at them and don't reply at all. <laughs> That's probably going to infuriate them even more, but you don't have to respond to them the way they came to you. And it takes spiritual maturity to do that. Because the Bible tells us that even though we're saved, the flesh is still in us and it's always fighting with the spirit. Now, the one who wins is the one you feed the most. <laughs> if you're going to feed the flesh with your gossip and slander, then you're going to become a gossiper or a slanderer. But if you feed it with the word of God, and the Holy Spirit will take control. So I have one little guideline. Sister Battles, could you read this for us? Sister Patricia, you're on mute. Okay. A simple guideline for speaking to others. Before you speak to someone, ask yourself, is what I'm about to say true, necessary, and kind? If the remark is not all three, then don't say it. This rule forces us to thoughtfully pause before we speak, and then to put the feelings of others before our own. It insists that we recognize that others, like us, are children of the King. God loves them, and so must we. Amen. Amen. Ain't that a simple guideline to follow? Yes, you know, ask is. yourself. Amen. Ask yourself, is what I'm about to say, is it true? Is it necessary and kind? See, because a lot of times we get Bible saying, well, I told the truth. Yeah, you did. But did you also ask yourself, was it necessary? Did you ask yourself, was it kind? So we need all three of those. Not that it's because, as we have said many times before, the truth is going to be the truth, whether you tell it or not. But is it mm. necessary? Or is it kind? And remember, we are to edify and build up each other. You know, And then we ought to think of how we might want to be uh, spoken to. 
and realize that you're not the only uh, child of God. These, these are God's children too. <laughs> God loves them just like he loves us, okay? So the last topic is the wisdom for the double-minded. <laughs> uh, verses 9 through 12, I need someone to read, please. With okay. it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers and sisters. This ought not be so. Does a spring does a spring forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine, grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fruit. Okay. What do y'all think about that before we go any further? Because there's a lot of conviction in those words right there. Well, one of the things is that you can't... Uh, you can't tell a person, you, let's say you can't badmouth a person and then turn around at the same time and tell him uh, that you love him, uh, that I'm, I, I have your best interest at heart. When it was you that badmouthed him or, or you, you allowed your tongue to, to try to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, you, 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 that, that's sort of, Straddling the fence, if you will. Yeah. When, when you're double-minded, it reminds you of the scripture that say uh, on those first uh, two verses. How can you say you love me, who you've never seen, and hate your brother, who you see all the time? Amen. So verse 9 say, you're going to bless the Lord, our Father, are you going to praise the Lord? You're going to do something holy with this mouth? And then you're going to turn around and curse, say something evil or, or derogatory about that one that is created in God's image with his likeness? And James say, um, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing? No, brothers, that, that cannot be. That should not be. You should not use your mouth to bless the Lord and that same mouth to curse him. Amen. That's Amen. double minded. It is. <laughs> so, and the same thing about the spring forth. Uh, does a spring forth put forth fresh water and brackish water, bitter water? Nope. No. It's going to do one or the other. Yes. It can and and I love that if can a fig tree yield olives or uh, a grapevine figs? No, it can't. Mm -mm. We have to come to the conclusion that everything must give what it is designed to do. A fig is designed to give figs. Grapefruit, grapefruit, olives, olives, fresh water. From uh, you know, the Dead Sea uh, has a lot of salt water. That's why nobody want to plant anything near it because nothing can really grow there. So, but you're not gonna get fresh water and salt water out of the same stream. We all have to recognize that we are designed for certain things. Now, the good deal about human beings, we have a choice of whether we're going to walk the way God would have us walk through the figs and the olive tree don't have that choice. They can't do nothing but produce figs or olives. But we can produce ourselves as being a child. So we're, we're different from the rest of the, uh, the earth. <laughs> Okay. 
So, so we want to think about that before we curse our brothers out. I think this is the same tongue you're using to praise the Lord, you know, and you need to choose to follow the Lord and be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's your choice. Both and both. Uh, Jackie, can you see that? Jackie. Okay, I got it. Controlling our tongue is a constant and conscious effort. We have to be aware of it all day, every day. What we say is a reflection of who we really are. Our words reveal our core beliefs and values. Sooner or later, what we really think and believe will come out in the things we say and do. Only by allowing the Spirit of the Lord to infill us can we control our tongues so we can say things that build up, edify, strengthen, and encourage others. Without this, in, in filling our untamed tongues, destroy, undermine, and cause immeasurable hurt. Christians are called to choose what we will say. We can choose to listen to the voice of God and do his will, or we can choose to put ourselves first and the care, concern, and love of others last. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. our, our, our closing. Mm -hmm. uh, controlling your tongue is a constant. Yes. You, you, you can't just say, I'm going to do it today. And, and it's a conscious effort. Yes. You need yes. to just be aware of who you really are. Because we said earlier, the abundance of the heart is what comes out. That's what we speak. And sooner or later, I don't care how you go on wanting to be this or that, but sooner or later, if your heart is not right, it's, it's going to come out who you really are. So, But we do have some help through the Holy Spirit to guide us and to keep us. So we want to keep that in mind. Uh, words that, that will bless people, uh, please, thank you, I'm praying for you, I'm sorry, some people have a hard time with that, and I love you. I noticed that uh, many of you on this call, when you end a call, you say, I love you, <laughs> you know, and that's a good thing, that, 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 that's a good thing, people want to know that they're loved. So we can use our tongues to edify and not destroy. So that's some guidelines for taming the tongue. Amen. Mm -hmm. but did Amen. anybody else have anything else they want to add before we give it to the young people? Okay, Miss Sonia. <laughs> So the young people <laughs> that I have participated with you, unless there are some other young people okay. on here that I don't see. Is Ayana on, Pastor? Is Ayana on, I, Pastor? Ayana, Ayana is not on. Okay. All right. Thank you, Trinity. You're a young person and you did participate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As always. Pastor? Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. A um, couple things. Um, a few weeks ago, um, but one of the things that I do every morning before I leave is I watch a little, uh, little snippet of TD Jakes. Um, and uh, a few weeks ago, he was talking to some folks, and he said, "Look, all of you should not uh, run out there to be teachers or preachers, because if you run out there, you're probably going to limp back if you make it back at all." <laughs> and so. He, and, um, you know, and I'm sure Sister Smith does, and, and I do as well, <laughs> take this role of being a teacher very seriously because of the impact that you have on people's lives. Mm -hmm. And what we have to understand is... Good morning, Pastor. Uh, good, good, good morning. Um, what we also have to understand is that as we deal in, um, as we deal in life, if you're a parent, you're a teacher. That's right. I, I mean, we, we, we need to recognize that. And, right. uh, you know, and when we are in some sort of leadership, leadership is about influence. And so we have some sway, some influence over the lives of people around us. And so we need to be what this verse is really war uh, warning us is we need to be very, very, very careful 
with what we are doing because of the impact we can have on people's lives. All right. And when we are dealing with the power of um, our tongue, um, it's very interesting. And I, I appreciate the fact that when Alonzo read the scripture, he read out of the King James and King James in verse two said, if any man offend, and then in the New Revised Standard, it says, anyone who makes no mistakes. Both that word there uh, for mistakes and offend is, is um, the same word, uh, or the, the, uh, the, the meaning of the word is in one is to cause to stumble. So when it says, if nobody offends, he's saying, if anyone doesn't cause anybody else to stumble. And then in the New Revised Standard, when it says makes no mistakes, it means that they stumble themselves. And so we have to recognize that because of our tongues, we can stumble ourselves and we can cause others to stumble. And so that's why we need to be very, very careful by what we do. Um, I think I've quoted this scripture several times for you before. Proverbs 10, 19, it says, where, where words are many, sin is not absent. Basically saying, when you talk a lot, there's a chance there's going to be some sin which is why I scare myself every single day. Um, and so this, ver this chapter is really, just, or the section of scripture that we've read, is just a reminder that while we might think we have everything else together, I'm going to church, I'm tithing, I know the hymns, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but what's coming out of your mouth? And we cannot have praise the Lord one moment, and mm, do you see what she was wearing the next? That's a problem. So we've got to really check ourselves. Uh, one of the things that I, I share with some people that I know is I say, look, we need to say it here before we say it here. I've never had to apologize for anything that I did not say. But I've surely had to apologize for a whole lot of things that just came out. And as I think Mara and both Sonia said, uh, you know, people can't unhear some things that you've said. And so if I say it here and it doesn't sound right, I better not let it come out of here. Um, another thing that I, I do want to uh, challenge you with, and I, I don't want to be one of those word of faith people, but I do, I do believe this. Um, what we are saying will point us to where we are going. And if you were always saying, and I think Sister Smith mentioned this as well because she's a great teacher, um, my marriage will never work. You are pointing yourself in the direction of your marriage never working. If you are pointing yourself in the direction, I'll never find a job. Um, I'll never graduate from school. If you are, if that's what's always coming out of your mouth, that's where you were headed. And, and so that, because when it's talking about a rudder and a bit, we can tell which way the horse is going by which way the bit is moving, which, which way the ship is, by where, how the rudder is. Well, by how your tongue is moving, we can tell where you're going. And some of us need to change the way we talk so that we can uh, change the direction that we are heading. Okay. And um, let's see, I said that, I said that. Um, oh, I'll, 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 I'll close on this one. Uh, Proverbs 17, 28. Um, actually, let me go ahead. And I was looking that up. Proverbs 7, 28. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. Uh, I think the, the, uh, the poet said, even a fool is considered wise when they keep silent. And so some of us, let's look wise today. Thank you. Amen. 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 Oh, wow. Okay, we need to say, uh, anybody doing any, the ones that do the prayer at the closing, I need you to pray for one of my sisters. They just was texting. That was why my phone was going off. They they had to do a, put some stints in her heart. They, she had breathing slow, and they took her to the hospital, so they doing stints in her heart. So I need y'all to pray for her. Oh, okay, yes. so let's do this, Jackie. Um, yeah. but I will, I will pray after we pray, we'll do the church school creed. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Eternal God, um, you know, what's going on in this situation better than any of us, but we also know that you are a heart fixer. Uh, the doctors are doing whatever they need to do, but you are a healer. And so right now we are claiming healing. We are speaking healing. 
Lord, we have no power in our hands to do it, but we do have the power of our faith, not our faith in the doctors, not our faith in the stents, not our faith in the medicine, but our faith in you, that you will see this through. And so, Lord, use the doctors, use the stents, use the medicine, but most of all, Lord, you bring the healing in the life of our dear sister. Now, Lord, we just ask that you will keep us all safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And when we find ourselves in the midst of danger, remind us that you were walking through that fire with us. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, let's say the church school creed. I believe my enemy church school must grow, must grow and grow. And, grow. and, and, and that I must I make it a top priority. Make it so. Make it so. Make it so. Every member of this church and every Christian work and work and try and so the work and work and not this we ask in Jesus name amen 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 thank you very much sister smith for uh your teaching once again and for everybody else for your involvement and uh i gotta be honest man i think in a lot of ways sunday school seems to be better on zoom um just the amount of sharing that we get and uh but uh i do want to thank you all i'm looking forward to our young people leading us in service uh in the next 28 minutes and so we will see you then god bless amen amen i see you guys later all right get you a little rest so you come on back to church bro <laughs> that's what i'm about to do yeah uh, i'm doing some black eyed